on a on a personal level, it was it was quite a big change. Suddenly, you um, felt this impulse to go outside because you were otherwise in your house, and it led to you kind of discovering the local park on your doorstep. I found one that I've, the evening was there and I was there every single day. It was both quite um, uh, an individual sort of solitary moment, but also coming together with people that you perhaps wouldn't have a conversation with, you cross paths with people you wouldn't see, and because of the unusual circumstances, um, you suddenly had this um, thing that brought you together. I spent a lot of my time kind of gazing out the window when I'd normally be at work, looking out on um, a locked up playground and watching sort of children come and go and not get to use it and sort of seeing people pass. We had quite a lot of phone conversations actually, looking out of our windows mm -hmm. onto those green spaces and kind of during those moments, that's when we dreamt up uh, our youth grows in a wasteland. So there was both um, an element of, um, there were places where you would come together with your friends, places outside of your house that your parents owned or your school where it was, there was rules and it was kind of your space and it was your language and your, your rules essentially in the space that you gathered, which is the really positive thing that came out of it. There was another element of a kind of sense of attention between different people that used the parks and a sense of generational tension and a sense from teenagers around um, that sometimes people saw them as suspect when they were just using outdoor spaces and actually they were just there with their friends. Obviously with the lockdown so many of teenagers sort of crucial third spaces which is not home, not school, those places they visit with friends or clubs or societies, all of those stopped. So outdoor green spaces became the third space that they could go to legally. And because we were spending so much time in parks, we started to think about groups gathering. And one of the things that we've done is we've kind of had uh, walks with young people to kind of gather some of these stories. We uh, recorded our stories in parks and um, on site. They're going to be available digitally, these stories that we've created with young people. Um, but we're also going to have them available um, in the park where they were filmed and set. And with the idea being that um, people that use the park will come across one of the signs and they will be intrigued enough to pop on some headphones, scan a QR code and suddenly they're thrown into the world of this young person um, and hearing a voice that they might not come across before and in a really intimate setting. It's open to lots of different people who use the park and it's forging that connection that might not happen otherwise. People put headphones in sort of with their head up, gazing up, looking outwards was quite interesting because often a lot of the media that we engage with is quite insular. We're close to screens, we're watching things a lot. The sort of format of using podcasts was quite freeing because it allowed you to both be in the space and present but also hear quite an intimate story. Elliot looks up at me lying on the rocket and I look back at the sky proper quick. And as a site-specific theatre company, we always work backwards, so where are the audience? Where are the people generating those stories? What we would really like to do looking forward is kind of use outdoor spaces as places to gather, really, and as places to explore uh, through workshops or through kind of uh, participatory experiences, but also as an audience member, hopefully embrace parks and outdoor green spaces as uh, civic places for the community. Thank you.